Okay, what we're looking at here is our typography sample page. I did link to the original page from the Moodle, so if you want to go grab that page, remember to do a file, save as, and then make sure that's web page HTML only. However, you don't necessarily need to grab the sample page. Um, that's because I don't have any styles in here whatsoever. If you want to just retype this little piece of information, even if you go look at it online, highlight it, copy it and paste it into a brand new HTML page or web page, um, you would be just as fine because there's nothing else in this page. Before I jump off into typography, I do want to highlight some notes. One of them being that, um, excuse me while I find it here, here it is. I have linked to a file that I have called Fonts Fantastic. This is something that I created a few years ago based off of research and it is a very, very, very brief summary of uh, some of the things that you need to know in terms of fonts. Fonts are a huge amount of fun to play around with and certainly the concept of fonts in web typography is a very, very narrow interest to be sure, but very passionately followed by a lot of designers. On this particular piece, I wanted to talk a little bit about this also sums up some of your readings from the other places that you do want to have your fonts be the same if in fact they are looking in if you're looking in the same area for example here within a paragraph or within a body of text you would want to keep that font the same now you could vary it in terms of bold um, perhaps color etc but generally speaking it's more soothing to us if we get consistent font across the same elements for example our body types should all be the same types of fonts if we have a separate navigation those should all be the same types of fonts they can be different from the body type but they should be similar from page to page conflict here is not really what you would want to do this is a sample of where we've got three different actually four different um, fonts going here and while it looks a little different it's not different enough so therefore it just looks wrong so you really want to avoid conflict by choosing fonts that are similar to each other in fact what you really want to go after is contrast if you're going to mix up the fonts you should mix up the fonts to the degree that they are very different and that lends itself to contra um, contrast so if I jump back a page here, font details, this is again something that you should have read about in your other articles. We know that it is far easier for people to read text when they have ascenders and descenders on particular lines. If you happen to have all caps such as this, not only socially is it known as shouting, but also from a reading perspective, it makes it very difficult to visually discern the word and certainly for younger students that's important we would want to do that for them um, the next thing is size we do not want to create fonts that are so similar in size that we really don't give emphasis to, emphasis to anything we do want to have good contrast and then the last portion here is the font categories now I've got a couple of samples of some font categories here but basically this is an expanded list of font categories and if you take a look there are all sorts of elements that create a category this is what's considered a serif font serif meaning that it's got these little tiny um, embellishments at the ends of the words here in addition this is also called old style because it's got a high thick thin ratio and that thick thin ratio is usually on the diagonal so you can explore these pages here in terms of what are the different types of fonts available or the general categories the other thing that I've prepared here is a quick page and even though I had just shown you some information on the categories the thing you really want to keep in mind is that you can break these fonts down into three basic categories that you're going to play with here a serif font again is a font that has these little tiny embellishments on the ends of each of the letters right here 
Those are really good fonts for reading off of a printed page. Again, according to the articles that I have you reading this week, you'll find out that these are real typical of reading off of a printed page. However, research shows us that a sans serif font here in this particular case I've chosen Arial is better for reading off of a computer monitor. That doesn't mean you can't use a serif font. I would just suggest you use a serif font for titles or headlines or things that you are going to be um, expanding to a larger degree. Whereas the body of your font, I would almost always recommend that you want to go with a sans serif font. The biggest difference here is the sans serif font does not have the little embellishments off of the uh, uh, ends of the words here. So for example, here to here. Also too, a sans serif font tends to have the same weight across it. So you will not see a thick, thin ratio going on in these letters. The last one here is the decorative font. In this case, not only can we call it a serif font, but we can call it an old style because it's got that thick, thin ratio. But the challenge with decorative fonts is that they're a little tough to use in terms of regular web page to design. Most of the time we will see them used as display font in a graphic, which we will explore next week. But more importantly, you want to make sure that you use decorative fonts only for emphasis, perhaps for a title um, or a headline. Off of that uh, web page previously, I also had excuse me, a link to a website that's called Famous Fonts. This is kind of fun to take a look at, that you can take a look at the fonts that are here, get a sense of what the actual font is that was used in these particular famous uh, pieces. So that's kind of fun to, to look at throughout the week. So moving ahead on how we take uh, a look at our typography page. First of all, I have absolutely no styles defined whatsoever. And in this exercise this week, I want to have you create a style for H1 through H6. And I want you to create a style for your paragraph. And I also want you to create two classes. And these classes are going to also be styles, but they'll be a little different. If you recollect from your um, lecture pieces last week that there are certain pieces that are inherent in the HTML, the fundamental HTML, and those are going to be your paragraph tags and your H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces, right? But if we want to go beyond those attributes or those classifications, we need to actually create a whole new style. And that's where the flexibility of CSS also comes in, where we can create not only a style for existing HTML pieces, but we can create a brand new style giving it any name we want. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. First of all, I've prompted you here, list the, the types of fonts you're using in each of, uh, each of the ones. That should not be above, that should be below. Don't forget an HTML tag, uh, title, and remember that your title piece, let me squeeze this over here, can be found right up here under the typography samples. Keep the page black and white for the moment. Vary the size of the font as well as the font itself. Keep in mind the theory that you've read about in typography and which fonts are best for various elements on the page. Okay, first of all, creating a style for the overall page. That's actually your paragraph font tag. However, it's best approached by defining a page property. So I'm going to squeeze this up a little bit. I'm going to come down to page properties. And again, the, the goal here is to create a font for the entire page. So I'm going to click on page properties and I'm going to choose a font family. Here in, in Dreamweaver, we can choose a font family. These are different fonts that look the same so that the end user's computer can pick the font that it has available. So for example, if I chose Verdana and my end user didn't have Verdana available, it would then pick up and look for Geneva. And if it didn't have that, then it would pick up any basic sans serif font. Now in terms of choosing fonts for your base page, I'm going to go ahead and choose this Verdana. I happen to know that it's a sans serif font, which is again better for reading off of a computer screen. And I'm going to now also give it a pixel height of 16 pixels. Now 16 pixels is considered a medium view on most browsers. It gets a little bit tough to 
uh, look at that because that becomes very relational. But the base font on this page, I'm going to consider as 16 pixels and I'm going to go ahead and give it a color of black. Now obviously I don't need to do that, that is the default, but I do want to explicitly give it a color so that I know what I'm looking at here. I'm also going to, actually excuse me, I'm going to just skip that for the moment, I'm going to click OK. So once I do that, now you'll see that now I have somewhat of a medium type font and it is definitely a uh, sans serif font. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and create the H1, the H2 uh, rules. Again, there's multiple ways to do this, but if I take a look over here in my CSS, I don't have rules for them now. I could go ahead and create a new rule, or I could leverage the page properties. So I'm going to actually do it two different ways. I'm going to go ahead and come down here to page properties and if I come over here to this portion called headings CSS now I have an opportunity to redefine the font for the heading as well as what the heading itself is so because headings are usually something that in entail emphasis or eye-catching I'm going to say that it's okay to use a serif font here so I'm going to switch over to uh, a Georgia font here that is a serif font and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate the sizes of my headings now there's a whole thought behind how you choose sizes and what you probably don't want to do here you don't want to choose an absolute value we did choose an absolute value for the page itself we chose 16 pixels that's a base font but from here what we can do is we can choose these relative values and the relative value the advantage of them is that depending on the font you've chosen the page will scale up and down um, in terms of looking at that h1 is usually considered my extra extra large it's the largest of all of them so I'm going to go ahead and click on extra extra large and I'm going to choose a color and I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Now I could just go all the way down the list here and create all of those pieces, but I'm going to go ahead and do just the H1 for the moment. Now we have a rule and I can see it over here. If I wanted to edit it, I could see it over here, but nothing really changed on the page and that's because I haven't actually applied an H1 for anything. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, in my directions, I wanted you to uh, write out the name of the font. So I'm going to do font is Georgia. Before I go any further, let me, uh, the page properties, the font is, um, let me do it this way, font Verdana. And so here I'm going to say that, okay, my, uh, 16 pixels right and then this is going to be considered extra extra large and I'm going to highlight this to apply a style an HTML style I'm going to come down here and I'm going to switch over to my HTML and I'm going to come over here to where it says format and I'm going to choose my H1 format and there indeed it is so if I wanted this to be perhaps an H1 which would be appropriate I'm going to click on heading one there right now I want you to um, create a style and create samples for H3 I want you to create a style for H1 through 6 you can vary the style size um, you can vary the font, you can vary the font color. I just want you to come back into this page and list, similar to what I've done here, what each of these pieces are. The objective of picking styles or typography is to look at what kind of typography goes together well and determine what it is you want to use throughout your website. So in this particular case, I'm just asking you to choose the types of, of fonts that you want to use and if you feel like you're ready you can go ahead and apply this same strategy back to your portfolio page and your instructional design menu page if you're ready to do that I do want to go on and talk about creating 
a class for a particular function over here. So we've talked about how to create H1, 2, 3. You can just go back into the page properties to do that. And that will build your H uh, tags over here. Keeping in mind that H tags are your original HTML tags that you can manipulate. But what if, in fact, it doesn't neatly fit into an H1 through 6, or perhaps you've already defined a style for H1 through 6, and now you need to define yet another style, but you don't want to change your paragraph overall, you don't want to change your body font or any of the H tags. You need to create something new. So to create a new class, what we're going to do right now, we don't have this class in place, and I want you to create a class called Main Title and another one called Subtitle. I'm going to demonstrate how to create Main Title and apply it. I'm going to come over here to my CSS panel. I'm going to find the little plus rule. Click on that one time, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a name of Main Title. Now, I don't, don't really have to put in the period in front of it as long as I've selected that it's a class, and that's um, the type of rule it's going to be. So Dreamweaver will know to put the dot in front of that for me. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I'm back to my uh, definition piece here. And I'm on the type area here. So if I go ahead and choose um, for, for very uh, something very different, I'm going to choose Comic Sans, right? And I'm going to choose a um, size of large. And I'm going to choose a weight of bold, and I'm going to choose a color of um, orange, for example. And I'm also going to apply a background to it. Now, this is probably going to look terrible, but that's okay. I'm brave. I'm going to choose something very opposite, black, right? And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now. If you take a look over here in your CSS, I've got a dot main title, and that's exactly what I need to, to do here. However, I've just created the rule, and now I need to actually apply it. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight a piece of content, whether it be uh, words or you know an entire paragraph or whatever. Now what I want to do is come down to my menu bar. I'm still on my HTML here. I'm going to come over not to the one where it says format, but rather to the one where it says class. I'm going to down click on this, and here, in fact, in my listing is that main title piece. And once I click away, indeed, I've got a class, or I've got a piece of text now that has the style attribute of main title. In this case, I've chosen, you know, a black background with orange text. Did I have to choose the background? No, not necessarily. But um, I want you to go ahead and create another class called Subtitle. Um, so at the end of all of this, you should have a page that has an H1 through 6 on it with elements listed here in terms of your font and sizes. And then I want you to have created two new classes and apply those classes to the different portions here. See you in a little bit.